Shopping and debt slavery continue as China's economy grows and bankers' profits rise. Russia kills, uh, mourns human rights activist and UN probes Bhutu death, but who gives a fuck? Dick Cheney set up secret CIA ops, lied to Congress, and got away with it. Ha ha ha! Freemasons held for sorcery in Fiji, but in the UK they rule your ass and lord it over you. Hello, taxable assets! Welcome to the fucking news. I'm Shareholders Dividends. Here are the headlines tonight. Great news, peasant slaves. The economic crisis is over. Last year at this time, the banking crisis threatened to destroy life as we know it, but we managed to hawk our futures to the fake wood pulp economy, plus interest, just in time. Now, our sacrifice is paying real dividends to shareholders, and we can pat ourselves on the back as economic indicators start looking good. China's economy grew at an annual rate of 7.9%, up from 6.1%. US bank Goldman Sachs reports a profit of 3.4 billion and JP Morgan Chase posts 2.7 billion profit. Phew! Phew! The global destroy the planet to make people rich machine is back on track. Here's Lord Astor Rockerchild the 11th gloating over our stupidity. We couldn't be much happier with the way things worked out, you know. I, I personally thought it would be much harder to saddle all you peasants with trillions and trillions of toxic liabilities. That, that's debt to you and me. <laughs> Ensuring your children and your children's children get born, work, shop and die for myself and uh, a few other wealthy banking families. But you live and learn. Yes, it's a source of great pride and no little entertainment to me and my cohorts that you have been royally fucked. Oh yes, uh, not that you weren't before, you know. But uh, the scale of the economic lie, the audacity of the proposition and the end result is simply mind-boggling, mind-boggling, gut-wrenchingly funny. <laughs> Not only were you forced by law to give up currencies based upon precious metals some time ago, actually, leaving you deluded paupers, not only were you chaperoned into an economy based upon debt by the very people who profit from that debt. Oh, my goodness me, it really doesn't get any better than this. Not only, but when the shit hit the fan, you were quickly persuaded to take on the losses of the failed make shit eat shit economy so we could carry on regardless, I say. <laughs> uh, well, we'll, uh, we'll leave Lord Astor Rockerchild the 11th there. More on that story later. Natasha Esti Morova, the head of the Chechnya Human Rights Organization Memorial, who struggled to expose the brutality of Russian security forces using wholesale terror against civilians, has not been murdered by Russian intelligence agents. She was not killed to stop her stories reaching the West and embarrassing the oppressive, violent Russian regime fronted by President Medvedev and backed by Prime Minister Putin, both former KGB killers, uh, members. BBC journalists who are paid vast sums of taxpayers' money to sit on their ass in hotel rooms around the world, parroting the information of real investigators, complained that without these kinds of courageous self-styled journalists dying for the truth, they might have to start earning their money themselves. In a related story, members of the United Nations inquiry into the assassination of former Pakistani PM Benazir Bhutto have arrived in Pakistan. Led by Chile's ambassador to the UN, Geraldo Munoz, the team includes diplomats, scriptwriters, novelists, and a decorator to paper over the cracks. The inquiry will last six months and will invent, I mean investigate, the facts and circumstances of Ms. Bhutto's death. She was killed in December 2007 as she left a party rally in Rawalpindi by a suicide bomber. Pakistani's Interior Minister Reman Malik says the UN investigation is necessary to find out who was behind the attack, though he believed the assassination was a big international conspiracy and this was an attempt to balkanize Pakistan. 
though he didn't want to jeopardize the whitewash uh, investigation before it reports its fabrications uh, findings. In America, the head of the CIA has accused former U.S. Vice President Dick Cheney of concealing an intelligence program from Congress. The existence of the program set up after 9-11 was hidden for eight years and its precise nature remains unclear. Oh, say can you see blah blah blah, land of the free home of the brave, yada yada yada. I'm intrigued by what that precise nature was, aren't you? Maybe he was having his wife followed to see if she was fucking the pool boy. Maybe he was monitoring Bush in case he got drunk and spilled the beans about 9-11 and the fake war on terror. Or maybe he was spying on the entire US population to tighten the secret government's grip on your lives and ensure the Fourth Reich's mein Fuhrer's final victory. Guess we'll never know, but who gives a fuck anyway? Other than an opportunity to say, mmm, that's terrible, nobody's gonna do shit, and next week you won't even remember it happened, as you'll be entertained by pictures of Paris Hilton's twat getting out of a car. Police arrested a group of Freemasons in Fiji after villagers complained they were practicing witchcraft. The men spent a wretched time in jail and blamed the mix-up on dopey village people. Police seized wands, compasses, and a skull from the Freemasons, but the men said nothing sinister was going on. Freemasonry is a centuries-old club that practices secret rituals and has more than 5 million members worldwide. New members are warned whilst wearing a blindfold with a knife at their throat to look after each other and keep each other's lawful secrets. For those breaking the rule, the penalty is your throat will be slit, your tongue will be torn out, and you will be buried in the sand. In the past, there had been a perception that Freemasonry is, is secretive and people who are members of it look out for themselves. But the Grand Lodge of England says members are strictly told whenever they join this is not the case and these are not the droids you are looking for and they must be concerned about everybody in society. You know, I think their concern about all of us may be the problem. Perhaps if they were just self-interested, I'd be less concerned about the judges, civil servants, cabinet members, policemen and prime ministers ruling over me. Still, I won't have to worry too much, because who is and isn't a Mason is a secret. Anytime the questions come up, the Grand Secretary of the United Lodge of England and its librarian, John Hamill, have refused to reveal the names of Masons involved in any cases of corruption or deception. Nice to know we live in a free world, though. And if you want, you can join the Masons. The essential qualification for admission is that you must have a belief in a supreme being. Aww. You can contact the Metropolitan Grand Lodge of London, 33 Great Queen Street, London, WC2B5AA. Telephone 020-7539-2930 or contact Chris Conop at Freemasons Hall on 020-7395-9226. More information on the website below. Thanks, and now the weather. The planet's fine, but you're fucked, and we're not telling you who's doing it. Have a nice weekend.